Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dilmer again, and today I'm gonna to continue with the videos of creating an augmented reality game, which we're gonna be picking up from what we did before. On the previous video, I show you how to create a simple racing controller where we have you know, a plane, we were able to control the car, the acceleration, rotation. In this video, I'm going to be converting that to AR. So we're going to start adding augmented reality components by using AR Foundation. I'm also going to show you how to add some of the plugins. I'm gonna show you what you see playing behind the scenes, which is the results of what we're gonna be doing today. I'm really excited about it. It actually turned out to be and look a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so welcome to part two of this video series on creating an augmented reality game. So what I'm gonna start doing is we're going to be resizing our car right here, because right now, if I were to, to hit play, everything is sized for you know mobile, a mobile game, a normal mobile game. But if we need to do you know, augmented reality, we need to change the scaling of, of the car. So I just wanted to hit play just so you know, what's, you know what we did for the previous video. We also added the overlay controls here so I can accelerate, I can also turn. And if I have time by the end of the video, I'm going to add another button here so that we can actually reverse. So the first thing that I'm going to start with is, like I said, we're gonna be resizing this because we're gonna be dealing with AR and it's going to be meters. So I'm gonna create a new scene and we're gonna call it the main game AR. And that way we can, we, we can leave the other one just as a reference. I'm also going to go to file and, and, and then basically just add that scene, then remove this. I'm gonna go step by step. It's gonna take more time, but I think it's going to be helpful for everyone that wants to learn how this is going to be set up if you have to create your own games. So what I'm gonna do as well is I want to duplicate the prefab, but I wanna change the original one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate it and then it's gonna be just car AR. And then what I'll do, I'll just drag it and drop it, you know, right next to this one. And it's gonna make all sense as soon as I, you know, we get done with this video. And then if I go here, I this has a rigid body, a car controller. It's not recommended that you change the scale of, of the, com the component that has a rigid body. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new empty game object. This one is gonna be called AR object. And then what I'll do, I'll just drag and drop this. We also don't need all these ramps. So I can just get rid of those ramps for now. And then I'll just move my AR object right here. And I'll just make sure that everything is a zero, zero, zero. Remember, make sure that everything is clean and you don't have any weird transforms. And because when it comes to AR, it's just so small on the units because we're dealing with meters that every slight, you know, incorrect changes on X, Y, or Z or the scaling is gonna make it look really, really obvious. So now that we have that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop this component here. And now we should have the AR object as a, basically as a prefab. All right, so the next thing that I have to do is, okay, now that I have that size correctly, I'm actually going to be resizing the AR object and then just do 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0.1. And yeah, it's going to be a little, a little car and that's fine. We'll just move this up a little bit and let me go ahead and move the car up here, get closer. Just make sure that, I'm, that I am in contact with the, with the actual plane in our case is going to be the the ground. All right, so I think that looks good. I'm also going to, let's go ahead and resize the gizmos a little bit so they're not giant. They, they look giant because we're dealing with, you know, such a small size. And then on the main camera, what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and get closer because I want to be able to test it. Let's do 0.7. And then perhaps we can actually move the camera so that we're right on the center by the car, there we go, the car is in the center and then we have more. Let's actually do a little bit more, something like that and then I'll just offset it on X as well. I'll do 8.35 there and then we'll do the same thing on the Z and then we can leave this one as it is. All right, so if we were to play this, it's going to, it's going to actually go way too fast because we have the same, yeah, and things are just not, not responding the same way that that they were before. Actually, they're not that bad, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be changing, let's change some of the properties in here. So I'm gonna go into the car and the speed, I'm gonna change it to 25. This is something that I already tested with. And the other thing that I also noticed is I had a box collider in here on the actual car AR component. We don't need that. I'm actually going to be removing this. So let's go into the prefab itself to make those changes. 
just to make sure that we have that one that was the collider that is here on the bottom i thought it was going to help the car for you know from actually tilting and it actually makes it work so we can remove that piece and also on the on the car ar you're going to change the speed to b25 the torque i think is way too high as well it's 230 and then if we go to the body i'm just going to go ahead and check a couple things in here the notes are fine then on the wheels let's make a couple more changes on the wheels and we're going to go into the tire 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 and then tire so we're going to be selecting basically all of those different components and i just got a couple of values in here this one is okay the damping value i think i set this one to five before the force at point distance we're going to be changing that to 0.1 and then a spring damper target position those are okay the forward friction, I'm going to be incrementing this because I don't want the car to be, you know, slipping as much. Let's go ahead and just, I'm just going to be putting values that I already tested with. It's going to be five. And then on the sideways, which is going to, you know, it's going to be the friction if the car is going in this direction. We're also going to be incrementing some of these values. So just do one, one, one there. The stiffness, I'm going to be doing 0.5. And if everything works, these values should be, should be good and the other thing that i can also do is i think those are fine okay so let's go back and let, let's make sure that the values were all already set there we go it looks like they're all set so i'm gonna go ahead and hit play and see if this looks better and there we go we just got then we got some some cool movement in there and there we go Okay, let me check a couple of the tires just to make sure. So that one has a wheel collider. And okay, there, there, here it is. And in some of these tires, I had a sphere collider. So what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and remove it here. And then I'll just do, we'll do the same thing. Let's go ahead and go inside here. Make sure that we don't have a sphere collider. In fact, this one doesn't have the wheel collider that we need. And I'm just gonna, gonna go ahead and copy it. Let's go into this guy and then make sure that I have my, my wheel collider and then paste component as new. And then it looks like that, yeah, that looks fine. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go ahead and apply all my overrides here. Let's go ahead and do and make sure that my wheel collider is in there as well. And also this one is fine. We just don't need this component here. And the same thing with the with this. I'll clean it up later, but you get the idea. I want to make sure that we don't have double colliders on the tires. And then that one is fine. And then this one, this one is fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play and see how this behaves now that I have those colliders removed. And we're going to get a little bit of shaking. And I don't know why that is, but but that's okay. The, the other thing that I'll do is let's go ahead and go here. And I think I'm going to in, in decrease this to 20. And let's hit play and see how this... I like the shaking actually because it looks like the car is is on and running so i think this is fine for what we need for ar so we can just tweak it and polish it later okay so now that i have that i think we're okay with you know with the car with the car as it is i'm actually going to let's actually go ahead and do an unpack it and then also delete this and let me make sure i'm going to unpack everything everything completely and then we can just deal with these objects as they are and then drag it and drop it in here. Now we should have an AR object that has everything that we need and we don't have the weird, you know, extra colliders in there. Okay, so now that we have that, we can just go ahead and remove it. We don't need it from this. And I'm also going to remove the main camera and I'm gonna show you what that is. And I think that looks, everything looks fine. The ground, we don't need the ground. And the, the reason why we need to remove all that is because we're going to start adding some of the AR components. So I'm gonna go into the package manager here and we're going to start with AR Foundation. So let's search for that and change this to re registry. And then if we expand this one, we're going to be using version uh, 4.11. Go ahead and hit install. We'll wait until this completes installing. All right, so it looks like AR Foundation is installed. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to be supporting AR Kit and AR Core. So I'm going to be installing the one for AR Kit. Make sure that you install the same version as it relates to the version that we did with AR Foundation, so 4.11 hit install okay so let's now do the same thing with ar core i'm going to go ahead and search and then we'll do 411 as well install okay so it looks like we have all the dependencies installed let's go ahead and go back into file build settings and i want to check a couple of things just to make sure 
that we have the plugins configured. So if you go into XR Plugin Management, you're going to see that we have iOS and it's not enabled. So let's go ahead and enable the one for ARKit under iOS. And then for Android, we're going to enable ARCore. So now we should be good as far as like what components we're going to need for augmented reality. And in the previous video, I also went into player and then we install the ARKit component, enable the ARKit component from the, from the settings. So if I go here, I always have a, have a hard, hard time finding it, but there's also, there we go. Okay, so that's because I'm looking at uh, actually Android. So let's go ahead and go into iOS. And if we go into iOS, you're gonna see the camera usage description is set to that. And then I should also have a setting in here for ARKit and you can see it requires ARKit support. And make sure the architecture is set to ARM64. So those are all the components that we're gonna need. And then make sure the scene that we have at it is set to that. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and add our XR components. So we're gonna right click on the hierarchy and going to be adding a session origin. And I'm also going to be adding the AR session that should actually be the first one on the very top, followed by the AR session origin. Then we have our light, then we don't need the spotlights anymore. We have our canvas, which we're gonna need for the mobile controls, and then player input and event system. Those are going to stay the same. The other thing that I also want to look at is going to be the universal rendering. We're going to need to make sure that the AR foundation, the AR background gets added. It looks like I had AR foundation installed originally, so you're going to need to make sure that that gets added. AR background render feature that needs to be added. Otherwise, it's not going to render correctly in AR. We need to have like a, an actual camera feed in order for us to work with AR. So that's what that's going to, it's going to do. Okay, so now that we have that, we should have a AR session origin. So everything we do, it's going to be, it's basically going to go inside of here. So I'm going to start by adding a new game object. This game object is going to be, I'm just gonna call it the game manager. It's going to be the one handling the, you know, the actual placement of the AR car. And that way we can, you know, we can use it for placing, you know, placing the car. I'm also going to have a, another component, which is going to be the one to, to render the, the mesh. So I'm gonna have it in here. We'll just go ahead and, let's go ahead and go into scripts. I'm going to add a new script. And this one we're just gonna call it the game manager. For now, it's just going to be doing the placement of the car on the mesh that gets generated by the lighter. On later videos, we'll do plane detection as well as a fallback for Android. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna go here into my game manager and then drag and drop my script. I'm also going to be adding the AR mesh manager. This is gonna be used for the lighter. And then in here, we're just going to be adding a cube. And this cube is going to be, it's actually going to be used by the lighter to generate the mesh. So, but the difference between that is that we're not gonna need the actual, the actual mesh because lighter is gonna generate it. So it's gonna remove it. I'm also going to remove this collider and we're gonna replace it by using a mesh collider. This is gonna be the one that the lighter is going to be using. And we need it because we need the car to collide with it. Okay, so then the next thing, I'll just go ahead and set everything. Remember, everything is set to zero. That's a good practice. I'm also going to be adding a, 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 an actual layer. And this one's gonna be, I'm gonna call it AR Mesh Lighter. Let's go ahead and do that. And this is gonna be used when we do a ray cast on the, you know, when we touch the screen, we do a ray cast on the mesh that got generated by the leader. This is gonna be the only thing that I want to do a ray cast against and detect. So. That's why we have that. And then this one, we're just gonna go ahead and assign it. And we can just rename this to be AR Mesh Lighter as well. It doesn't really matter. You can call it Lighter Mesh or anything that you know makes sense to you. And then I think that's everything that we need there. I think I'm gonna add a different material. And let's go ahead and go into materials here and then create a material. And then we can just call this one, it's gonna be the Mesh Lighter. And then we can just drag it and drop it into our game object here. And then we should have, you know, we should have that created in there. And then this one, I'm going to make it, I want to simulate that this is gonna be a row, right? So we can just set it to like, uh, I think a light gray should be fine. And I think that's fine. Okay, let me just create quickly just a sphere so we can see how that it's going to look. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it. And I think that looks fine. Specular highlights, we can disable, we can also disable that. Okay, so I think that's the gray that I was looking for. Okay, so we can just remove it from here and then this is gonna be the one 
that it's going to be used. So what I'll do, let's go into prefabs and then drag and drop this. I think we're good with that object. We can remove it. And then we're going to go back into the game manager and then associate our mesh prefab. The density here, I'm going to crank it up to one because I want this mesh manager to generate a lot of tessellation on the mesh that get generated. So higher the number, the, you know, the more details that we'll have. And it says in here, if you look at that description. Okay, so I think that's everything. We're just going to do normals. We won't do any of those. And I think those are good to go. All right, so we're going to need to actually implement the game manager. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the script so that we can start working on that. And we're also going to be adding a prefab. The prefab that we're going to be adding is the AR mesh, the, the actual AR card that we, that we created. So let's wait until Visual Studio opens up. All right, so here's the game manager script that we're going to be implementing. I'm actually going to be removing, let's remove everything in here. We're gonna, we're gonna start with the serializable fields that we're gonna need. So we're gonna need a game object. It's gonna be the game object that we're going to be placing. So it's gonna do game object. This is gonna be our car prefab. We're gonna just call it prefab, I think that's fine. And then we're also gonna need a reference to the camera because we're gonna be doing some conversion from a touch point on the screen to actually get a ray. So we're going to do private and then we'll just do camera and then we can just call it AR camera. Then we're also going to need to be able to do a ray cast. So we're going to need to determine what layer mask we're going to be using. So I'm just going to do layer mask and then we can just call this one layers to include. Perfect. And then we're also going to need access to the, the game, the car controller. And I'm going to show you why I need access to that. So car controller. We're actually going to have to change how the car controller works because currently it's a singleton and the way that we're going to be setting things up, that's not going to work. So I'll just show you how that works. Then I'm also going to be doing the awake method here and we're going to be using something different that I haven't used in the past and it's called enhance touch support because we're using the new version of the input system. So let's go ahead and bring in that. And this is going to allow us to basically do what we used to do with the input that get touches. So I'm just going to go ahead and enable it and make sure that you call the right method. It's going to be called the enable. Okay, so then the next thing that I'm going to do is we need to implement the update method, which is going to be a little bit lengthy, but it's not going to be that bad. So we're just going to do update here. In the update, we're going to be getting the active touches. And I'll just say Unity Engine the input system in hand touch touch and then active touches so this is going to give us all the active touches just like the get you know touches method used to do and then i'm going to say active touches that count is greater than zero if we're touching the screen then you know the count should be definitely greater than zero i'm also going to be just getting the touch then i'm going to get the first basically the first touch that's all we need then bool, and then there's going to be a thing here that I'm going to be checking for. It's called the, the is point over UI object. I use that a lot because if, if, if I'm touching on a UI component, I don't want to really be detecting and actually placing the car at that point. So I'll just show you how that works. I'm just going to do a screen position and then it's called is point over UI object. Okay, so we're going to have to be bringing in the actual meta and I already copy it. So I'm just going to go ahead and I already copy it to the clipboard. So I'm going to go back into Unity and then we can create a new folder here. I don't want to implement it because I already did that in a previous video. So we'll just go ahead and add a new folder and I'm going to call it extensions. And then in here, I'll just go ahead and paste the script and we'll just rename it here in a minute. I'll just go ahead and open it up and I'll just paste it. And it's called the block UI extensions. And what it allows you to do is if I'm basically clicking in here, it's not going to actually, you know, do a raycast anything beneath it. So it's going to block the any, any UI, any raycast when a UI is selected. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit save. So we have the new name. Perfect. Let's go ahead and go back in here. So now this should be this should be working. Okay, so what we need to do now is we actually need to do the implementation of the of the Raycast. So the first thing that I want to do before we keep going is I want to make sure that if I'm over a UI, we don't, we don't actually don't do anything else. So I'm just going to go ahead and return. That's what that was for. And then I'm going to be using my new touch input system and I'm going to check, okay, if the face is 
actually begin. That's the only time that I'm going to be placing the card, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it and begin. And if we begin touching the screen, then this is where we actually need to do the ray. So I'm just going to go ahead and do get my ray here. I need to use my camera. I need to convert the screen point to an actual ray. So I'm going to be using touch and it's not position anymore. Now this is called a screen position, which is it's actually pretty cool. And I like that name a lot better. And then I need to get the, the actual head. So I'm just going to say physics. And then raycast, I need to pass in the, the actual ray. I'm going to be outputting a variable called hit. So it's going to be var out var hit. And then I need to get, I need to determine at what point, you know, the distance. I'm just going to do flow and then positive, inf positive infinity. And then this is going to be your layers that we need to include. So this, if, if we're hitting a mesh, this should actually be, you know, return true. If, if we're not hitting a mesh, it's going to return false. So now I'm just going to do a check in here and I'm going to say, okay, if we hit, if we, have a, if we have a hit, now we can place the car. So, but before I place the car, I want to make sure that I'm not placing the car multiple times. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add an end and I'm going to say if car controller equal equal null, then we can do this. That way, if we just the first time, we can only place one car. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a reference to the, to the car that, it's, that we're going to be creating. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call instantiate. I'm going to be passing my car prefab. I'm going to be passing my point. And then it's going to be quaternion identity. I don't need to actually assign any rotation. It's going to be using the default car rotation. And then we're going to have to change a couple of things on the player input because right now the car controller, it's going to get instantiated and it's going to create a singleton. That's really not how we want to, how we want to handle the car. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into my car controller here. We're going to be removing here and we're going to be saying, okay, we're going to be inheriting from, from mono behavior. And I think, okay, there we go. So we don't need our singleton here. We're actually going to make the player input controller the singleton. So I think all of these looks fine. And let's go back into my player input controller. This one is going to be a singleton and I'm just going to be passing in the same name. Let's copy and paste it. Perfect. And then bring in my using a statement I'm going to remove the usings that I'm not using anymore. It's going to be in my complaint here in just a minute, but that's fine. Then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my, my instance. It's going to be car controller. I'm going to be actually passing it in. It's going to create a private variable here that we can use. I'll just replace that with this one. We can replace this one as well. This one as well. And then this one we can do, we can do as well. And then what I'll do here, I'll just add a new method. This is going to be the one that we're going to be setting from my, from the game manager. So because the game manager now controls when the car gets created, when the car gets created, I'm going to be using the car instance to bind it to the player input controller. So this is basically what it's doing. Then we're just going to call this method bind car controller, car controller. And again, if I'm doing a lot and it doesn't make sense, I'm going to be you know, making this code available in Patreon so you guys can get it. And then, you know, a few months later or a few weeks, depend, depending on how it goes, I might make it available in GitHub. Okay, so I think everything in there is good. Let's go ahead and hit enter here. And so everything should work the same way. The fix update is going to detect if we have any of these variables set. And if it, if it does, then we're going to be using the reference that we set to call these methods, basically so that we can move the car. So now we go back into the game manager and now we should be able to use the player input singleton, player input controller singleton and instance. And then we're just going to be calling our bind method that we just created. And then we're passing, the, passing in the, the actual instance of the car controller. And for some reason, this is, this is oh, actually, I know why, because we need to actually pass it in the reference, which is going to be the, the reference of the car controller script, because this is what that takes. And I know that because that's what we just did. And then we can just clean this up. I think everything here, we can actually make this a little cleaner here. There we go. And I think everything there, everything there looks fine. And this prefab, we can just call it, call it what I was going to call it car prefab, just to clean it up. And I think everything looks fine. Let's go ahead and go back into Unity and look at our game manager. And now we should have the car prefab available here. We're going to be associating that. So I'm going to drag and drop our car prefab which is our AR object, the camera. We need to also associate the camera 
layers that we're going to include on the Raycast that are going to be AR Mesh Leader or Lighter. I think somebody correct me online the other day. It's called Lighter, not Leader. But you know what I, what I mean by listening to me in multiple videos. Okay, so I think that's everything that we need to do here. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a new, basically a new button so that we can actually, you know, go in reverse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my textures here. I'm going to go ahead and open up my UI master and we're going to add another button right here for the reverse. So we can add the button while Photoshop is loading. And this one we can just call it, instead of calling acceleration, I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to call this one the reverse. We can just say reverse button. I think that's fine. And if you remember, if we go back into my, so let's go ahead and go into player input and let's go ahead and open this asset. If you look at reverse, the input for reverse is going to be the down, down arrow keyboard. So we're going to go ahead and go back here and we need to change this to be down arrow on the keyboard. That way it's bound correctly. And we can also move this button that we just duplicated a little bit on the side. I could keep it that way or we could just, you know, make a different one so that it looks a little bit different. I think I'm going to make a different one. And then we can just do negative 600. Looks like Photoshop just finished opening and it's on my other screen. So let's go ahead and bring it here. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this one. And this is going to be reverse. And let's go ahead and remove the, the word copy. We don't need that. And I'm going to just offset this one a little bit here. And what I'll do here is we can just, let me go ahead and get closer. And I'm going to use my little, I can't remember what this one is called, the rectangular marquee tool to remove part of this. Because I just want to add two, basically two columns. And it's going to complain because this is a shape. So I'm just going to go ahead and rasterize it if I can find, there we go. And then we can just remove that. Perfect. So now on the actual rack, Though I want to resize it because I think it's it's going to be too big. There we go. So that actually looks more like an accelerator than than the reverse, but you get the idea. So we can close out of this. And now what I'm going to do is let's go back into textures. We're going to open up our sprite. I'm really familiar with this thing. So the so if I'm going too fast again, it's because I, I, I use this a lot to I use these tools a lot for other things that I make. OK, so we can resize it here. And I could have just removed them all and just have it recreate, but I don't want to. I want to make sure that everything is already as associated correctly. And we go and we just do that. Okay, it doesn't need to be perfect. And then hit apply. Now we should have a new a new sprite. So if we go back here and we go into reverse, we can now associate this with our new sprite. And I'm going to click on. I want to make sure that I that this is you know sized correctly, and for some reason oh I see why because if you look at the image type here one is simple and one is a slice I'm going to go ahead and go back into simple and then hit say set native size and then remember this one was 300 so I'm just gonna make it I'm actually gonna leave it like that but the height needs to be higher and I think I'm gonna actually increase the width a little bit more maybe 224. Perfect. And let me go ahead and go into my scene view here so that we can, we can put it right next to this one. And I think that looks fine. So now we had a, we're going to have the left and the right to turn left and right. This is going to, this is going to be for our reverse and this is going to be for our accelerator. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to call it good. I don't need to do anything else in here. Accelerate is fine. And then we'll go into file, build settings, and then we'll just go ahead and build it. So I'll just show you as soon as this is done building. All right, guys, so I got this built to my device. So I want to show you the results. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And I'm basically using the iPhone 12 Pro. You can see that it has the lighter functionality. And I'm going to keep scanning the room. And at some point, I'm going to have enough 3D meshes to be able to place the car. You can see how the shadows look really cool when you, you know, when you have shadows in the area moving the car. I also added a log because I wanted to find out what it was doing. I have a couple of books in here and basically I think it's, a, it's actually a Nintendo Switch box and I also have a play. So I just wanted to see how those were generated if I got closer. You can see how you know the car is bouncing and I need to improve the physics on the car but this basically covers what I wanted to show you. It's basically built 
a car. And on the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start adding more functionality to this. We're gonna be adding multiple targets. I'm gonna be uh, adding, you know, retycles so that we actually know where we're gonna be placing the car, restarting the scene and other features that I want to add to this video. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.